Hi there. I'm pleased to announce a new course, a complete chess opening repertoire for black versus one e4. And this is based on the Karakhan defense. So after e4, we have c6, the Karakhan defense. And basically, let's have a look at the course page. So I would say that there's quite a few abilities when you play the Karakhan, a well developed opening repertoire in this course to enter your games with greater confidence. You can recognize and respond to common tactical motifs and patterns, be able to handle even endgame positions that arise, or you know, familiar with the resources, like the pivot square d5 sometimes. You can develop a, a deeper understanding of the strategic concepts like pawn structures, piece placement, and control of key squares. It's with you know past world champions that you're actually following the paths of the likes of Bokvinik, Tigram Trozin, Anatoly Karpov. So there's quite a few benefits to check out. So basically, let's go to the course structure. I'll expand out the course structure here. And you can do this, you can find this page if you go to Kings Crusher TV, and then click on the Karakon mascot, those two cute dogs up there. And I know that's a funny board. It's a cartoon board. It's their training board. <laughs> I had in mind Kara and Khan. It's nice to have two two dogs. You know, it's like both studying the board, like Kara and Khan. So it's named after Marcus Khan and Horatio Caro. And we see a bit in the introduction about them, as well as, you know, why to play the Kara Khan. What does it mean to have a solid opening? How are the recommended choices made in this repertoire? And so in the repertoire, here's an example in the Tartico variation. So d4, d5. So it doesn't matter if knight c3 or knight d2. We're going to play d takes against both. And this is really, really trendy nowadays. Knight f6 instead of what used to be considered the old main line, which has many, many moves to it and many, uh, a mass of games to, you know, potentially check out. But knight f6. Is a lot easier actually. Knight takes f6, and instead of g takes, which is the Bronstein Larson variation, to play e takes f6. Now this was championed by Victor Korshnoi, among others, and it get you know it gets its name to, from Savali Tartakoa. It's a very very interesting variation indeed, in my view, and so that is a repertoire choice against the main line. If we go down and have a look at my other repertoire choices in this course. We also explore knight g3 as well. White didn't have to necessarily play knight takes f6. We explore other things like knight g3 and knight g5. So those are explored as well. Not a problem. You're covered in this course with those. So the advanced variation is a critical test of the Karakon, pretty popular as a try. Even though it seems to give the bishop, you know, a scope, we don't actually recommend this move. The Botvinnik Coles variation is with c5. This really is interesting under the scrutiny of modern engine analysis. And Arkel and Kenkin are two amazing grandmasters using this move with great success. And by the way, Keith Arkell plays for my King's Crusher team sometimes on Lee Chess. If you want to find the King's Crusher YouTube and Twitch team link and, and join me and Keith for, for team games online, that's great. So the you know this Arkel Kenkin line is really really interesting. So the Karakhan was used in the 1961 rematch, which Botvinnik beat Tallinn. I mean, there are other factors for that victory as well. Tal, Tal had obvious health issues, but the Karakhan played a big part in trying to neutralize Tal's dynamic tactical attacking play. And there were three games in that match with C5. So its original, you know, name was was gained from those three games, even though it was only like two draws and a loss. And Botvinnik really didn't do too much to promote the variation after that ma match. So in more recent times, Arkel and Kenkin are two major exponents for the for you know, and I've mentioned that about the Arkel Kenkin names. And you'll see in this section many amazing game examples from many grandmasters, including Keith Arkel and Kenkin. So you can learn a lot about chess generally, how resourceful they are, you know, ideas structural themes, amazing tactical resources. Uh, you know, this game against Greece is absolutely amazing that Keith played really, really dynamic as an example. So there are other variations, of course. So looking at the situation 
in the Karakhan, when you create this tension with d5, there are not too many wild and you know wonderful adventures where it can go on. You know, the fantasy variation, the advance, they can take, they can support the pawn in two ways. So f3 or knight c3, but you know, the advance and the exchange, there's not too much to the Karakhan compared to, say, the Sicilian defense. Now, if we look at the exchange variation, White can continue usually with bishop d3 or with the pano botvinnik attack or pano attack with c4 and those are both covered so we look at the exchange with bishop d3 and quite often you're getting the so-called Carlsbad structure so with the Carlsbad structure there's you know ideas of attacking white's pawn chain later with b5 b4 and you'll you'll get an introduction actually to the Carlsbad structure and, and the key ideas ideas there as well as plenty of example games and you'll notice I've actually dissected key moves. So when the recommendation, which is g6, is recommended, I've done a dissection of move six, you know, bishop f4 and knight f3. You know, there's quite a dissection, and that's the style of the recommendations. There's a, a dissection which you can see quite vividly in the structure of the course with these equal signs. <laughs> so, yeah, I had a whale of a time dissecting and and using this course in recent weeks with fantastic success uh the fantasy variation the world of fantasy is uh f3 now you might think what how does this even crop up you know it's not against the french defense is it the reason it's not against the french defense is that it would be a big problem here you know d takes and the queen can come out to h4 check and ouch White's going to like lose a ton of material and lose instantly. But against the Karakhan, the fantasy variation is actually a possibility because we haven't opened up the queen on this diagonal. So it's interesting to consider the fancy variation. It can be very, very dangerous and dynamic. And so the recommendation here is e6. So moving on, you know, the Pano Botvinnik is interesting. So that's in the exchange variation. So e4, c6 d4 d5 e takes c takes c4 so we're looking at knight f3 here and then g6 so offering a temporary pawn sacrifice if they did now we can either like take immediately and there's bishop c4 knight b6 line or we can leave that pawn and just casually you know bishop g7 and allow white some possibilities like bishop b5 turn queen a4 so they're both interesting possibilities and those options are kind of explored if you look at the structure so yeah we, we explore many options there now against there is actually some independent territory of this this is a funny one in my research not every you might think it is a beginner move because if lower right players might just take on d5 but the more advanced players might be using knight c3 or, or knight f3 just to enter the two knights variation but beyond that as well a more advanced player might be using this line for e takes c takes and the apocalypse attack knight e5 which sets some unique problems so there's an example game in the an analysis for the apocalypse attack there as well you'll see knight e5 you've seen this structure there's knight e5 examined so there are ways of playing it which you know are not the kind of bad exchange variation because this would be in effect a bad exchange variation if if playing like this because this bishop you know it can wait even to pin the knight it's outside of the pawn chain it's like uh, and then we can play e6 we got like a solid french in a way with the bishop outside of the pawn chain sometimes so that if that is the intent it's not a great intent but these other intents are very interesting for white like the knight e5 so you'll see in, in the structure of the course you'll get an idea from the structure of the course how we're tackling each of the variations now in the two knights variation against the Karakhan so let's have a look at the two knights. so we, you know white can start with knight c3 and then knight f3 as an example so the recommendation here is actually bishop g4 and you might think hold on why didn't i just simplify the repertoire by saying d takes and knight f6 why is not obliged to play knight takes f6 and d4 and sure that would be a start position why actually does well in this position to play queen e2 you might think that's that's funny well knight d7 knight d6 chat is very funny that's a chat mate but actually white gets an advantage with queen e2 as as you see in technical analysis here so actually overall the recommendation it also is not d4 because this is also good for white but actually to play bishop g4 
So this is a key move, you, you know, tried and tested by the likes of Tiberham Trojan and other world champions. So bishop g4 against the two knights, there's a, a kind of, uh, you know, a dissection. Again, you'll see these equal signs dissecting various moves after the recommendation. So bishop e2, d4. So yeah, I really enjoyed dissecting the recommendations. Now, the accelerated pano attack, so the accelerated, let's go, so e4, c6, immediate c4. The recommendation is d5. So this position is interesting. How white can sometimes try and cling on to the pawn. It gets you know a very fun game. So we've looked at some very fun games there. The Breyer variation is not to be underestimated. So e4, c6. Now this can often lead to a King's Engine attack setups from white. So we look at d5, then knight d2, or knight f3. And then actually, with a slight preference for g6, if knight f sorry on knight f3 on knight f3 we can avoid actually d takes e4 this is actually giving white some decent results we can avoid that actually and actually play g6 and we can do the same which is more common against knight d2 to play g6 so this is interesting against both and sometimes there's a magnificent trap actually to be aware of that also you know there's knight g5 and if e takes bishop takes You'll see that there's an x-ray of the queen from d1 to d8. So if you casually play this, then splat, like my good friend Tom Villiers had a brilliant <laughs> trap experience, trapping his opponent with this, and then bishop g6, end of game, check, winning the queen. So that's a fun trap. But you can avoid all of the complications, really, just, just by playing here. Even against knight f3, don't play d takes, just play g6. That's a recommendation. I've done you know a lot of analysis with, with modern engines to come to these conclusions and to try and make it as easy to play as possible. Now against the Raza Studio Gambit, so e4, c6, d4, d5, knight c3, d takes. Yeah, this is not so bad. We can just play e5. So the way I play it with white is try and this just you know play bishop c4, the von Henning, you know, gambit. And you know, there's a recipe here given basically of knight f6 f3 and then b5 and this is awkward for white as you'll see in this uh, repertoire and there's the bohemian attack which is something the likes of david bronstein would come up with with, with you know knight e2 so e4 e c6 knight e2 d5 so we're basically uh saying here that um we, we haven't really got too much of a problem if d4 e4 c6 knight e2 d5 we haven't got too much of a problem there so whoops <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> okay <laughs> all right move, swiftly moving on the hillbilly attack is also checked out so that's a, fa a favorite of simon williams so e4 c6 knight c3 d5 Queen f3. I mean, check out the sample videos as well. There's sample videos in this structure to check out. So the idea of the hillbilly, uh, you know, we can actually um, after bishop c4 d5. So that's that's something else. So bishop c4 d5. Pardon me. Bishop b3 white sacks a pawn to get this kind of aggressive idea in queen h5. But we look at how to handle that. We look at how to handle the golden variation as well and one of my <laughs> one of my uh, kind of bullies online this grandmaster alexa 81 who, who you know mostly wins all the uh, daily super blitz tournaments at lee chas his pet variation i managed to beat him recently with a prepared variation from this course essentially so i'll say this is the alex sir variation where he plays queen e2 the idea that the knight can use d1 it's he's you know had some very interesting results with it especially online and basically you know there's a recommendation for e5 and try and dissuade f4 with bishop d6 so you will see you know recommendation there in one of my games against them uh, so which I managed to win very occasionally I do win against them so the Karakhan Erwa attack is also looked at for a moment and Mises Gambit so basically I'm trying to equip against all the weird and wonderful stuff as you'll see in the core structure so I do try and make it as complete as kind of uh, practical practically possible 
Uh, complete can never be complete because chess is such a vast, gigantic game. There's PGN downloads, conclusions and philosophical points. So I do hope you check out the uh, the structure of this course. And also, you know, my courses page generally, the complete guide to uh, positional chess is doing really well, by the way. It's like a 4.9 rating. It was five for quite a while. So check out my other courses as well on the King's Crusher TV page. So, yes, I think what I wanted with this repertoire basically was a kind of bulletproof system. Sometimes in, uh, you know, recent titled arenas, I found that my tango in particular unfortunately with the tango it doesn't have to get unique territory that's the problem of it that why it doesn't have to tango along it takes two to tango why it doesn't have to tango so to speak so you know if white doesn't tango if white refuses the tango with you know knight f3 then you know white's got options you know the italian game the spanish game the scotch game white's got loads of options and i'm i'm you know i've been finding sometimes that with you know g6 i get some weaknesses which even at the fastest time controls when you're playing against other types of players in in bullet or blitz even you know th that these weaknesses they become embarrassing so i was looking basically for a super solid system with black so that especially in those you know very strong tournaments i want to minimize the embarrassment factor actually so the kara khan is taking your opponent into your territory a lot more it has a lot more kind of independent value another benefit of the Coracon the exchange variation is is still asymmetrical pawn structure in the French you'll notice you know it's it's the exchange variation is a total pain because if you want to try and win with the black pieces you know there's only the one shared e file so sometimes the asymmetry of the pawn structure helps winning chances so the exchange variation is really nothing to fear in fact, you know, it's it's not a really high scoring line, even though it's called, you know, panel bottling attack or panel attack. It's not that scary or bishop d3 is not that scary. And, um, you know, if you know about the Carlsbad structure from other openings, you'll know the, the basic default plans. So that includes, you know, playing for e5, playing for minority attack, playing to put a knight on e4, that you know, the Pillsbury plan in reverse, basically. So, you know, this isn't such a bad structure, the exchange variation. You've got a wealth of plans there. And... So there's really it's a really interesting opening. I think it's like the new Sicilian defense. And yeah, it's the favorite of many many modern grandmasters nowadays. So I'll check out the structure of this course. I did put a lot of work into this course, a lot of modern game examples, a lot of classic game examples. Uh it's, you know, the latest engines with, you know, neural neural networks, neural networks stockfish with neural networks and yeah, I've really had a fantastic time in creating this course and using it with great results in recent weeks in particular. So it's something I have been using also in the past on the ICC sometimes with, with good results as well. I've always thought it's quite a stable opening. It's a bit like the equivalent of playing, I suppose, the London system with white. It's kind of solid and re reliable, like a Volvo car. <laughs> I was, you know, consider Volvo's, you know, kind of, kind of reliable car maker. It's a bit like that. So the car can and it's also a bit of a surprise because most players, you know, they're, they're usually prepared for Sicilian defense or E5 and not so much the car can So statistically, it's got that best of both worlds. It's good statistically without the huge weight of opening theory associated with the Sicilian or E5. And, and in the Sicilian, the problem as well, all the anti-Sicilians like Knight C3 or the smith Morrow Gambit or C3, that's... And even if you get, you know, the second move in that you want, then here they don't have to play the open. Sicilian is annoying Bishop E5. So Sicilian has got a lot of anti-Sicilians associated with it and all the variations that you might be wanting to play. So sometimes your variations ne and your preparation never sees the light of day. So at least with the Karakhan, we're in our territory for move one. That's something I really like. That's one of the big values for me of preparation, to try and get an informational advantage against opponents. And I believe this course will equip you for that informational advantage. So I hope you check it out. King's Crusher TV, it's on a fantastic discount at the moment with that. It follows through with the coupon codes if you go to the King's Crusher TV page. So you see that whopping, uh, you know, on my screen, 95% for the next four days. So yeah, please check it out and uh, let me know if you do enroll or just check out the sample free videos on the course structure here. Uh, so that that's great. You can see that the sample free videos, if you expand out all the sections, then you can see that there's a lot of sample free videos to check out. Okay. Comments, questions, likes, shares, subscribes, all appreciated. <laughs> Thanks very much.